very large financial market sell-offs this week as the Fiat Federal Reserve raised their federal funds target rate again by 75 basis points. And while we continue to read headlines of raising rates by central banks around the world, led by the Fiat Federal Reserve, the bigger story ongoing here is the speed at which they are moving to raise rates. Year to date in 2022, relative continued strengthening by the world's still dominant fiat currency has produced massive sell-offs and not merely in most commodities and precious metals, but also in unprecedented losses in the world's largest financial asset classes like stocks and bonds. The fiat US dollar index had another massive jump this week on the rate rise, falling below one versus the fiat euro to close this week, now nearing a 20 year high on a relative basis in that fiat currency pairing. And two, when comparing the fiat US dollar versus the world's still oldest fiat currency unit, the fiat British not sterling silver anymore pound, well, it's now nearing an over 50 year low versus the US dollar. You have to go back to the Plaza Accord in the mid 1980s to find a time when the fiat pound was this weak on a relative basis versus fiat US dollar. Turning now to the largest asset class in the world, bonds. Jim Bianco said the following this week on CNBC. I think anywhere you look, people are stunned by how much interest rates have risen this year. Um, are you? Yes, and I came into the year bearish on the bond market, but yet the returns that you've seen in the bond market are the worst in recorded history. This is going to go down as the worst year ever to be a bond investor, and it's not getting any better. What you saw today in the UK was the biggest rise in their five-year note hit in history. It was up 51 basis points, a half a percent, one instrument in one day, which is an extraordinary move. You're seeing interest rates all around the world moving up higher, and it has just been something to a sight to behold, even for a bond bear like me, to watch these kind of uh, moves that we've seen in the bond market. You know, we heard about an hour or so ago, Jeremy Siegel, the esteemed professor from Wharton, um, very critical, uh, as animatedly as I think I've ever seen him, very critical of the Fed, um, and basically saying they're, they're going too high, too fast, uh, and, and indicating that they're going to stay too long without giving any sense that, um, you know, they'll be sensitive to the idea of, of taking their foot off the brake uh, if they begin to see an, a slowing economy, which he uh, opines we're already beginning to see in some areas, most especially housing. What do you think? You know, the, the, I think that that's the problem. Why are rates continuing to soar? because nothing is breaking yet. You had Savita mm -hmm. on a minute ago, and she was talking about the consensus on earnings is 8% for next year. No one really thinks anything's breaking. Initial claims are falling. We've created 300,000 jobs in the last payroll report. So yeah, we've got the FedExes of the world that are giving us some warnings, but by and large, everything's holding in. Now, what does that mean? In a world of inflation, rates can keep going and keep going, and that's what's bothering the market. When things start to break, yields will plunge, I mean plunge, and then you'll know that we're probably near a low. So right now, we're in a scenario where good news is bad news. And as far as the Fed goes, I think the Fed is, is trying to make up for their mistake from last year. I'm mm -hmm. as critical as the Fed, but I think their mistake was they didn't start raising rates last year. They waited way too long, and they're now playing catch up. And I also think the other thing that people have to maybe think about is this is a persistent inflation. This is not a one-time thing because we reopen the economy and then inflation disappears. It's ongoing. It needs to be dealt with. And that's what the Fed's trying to do. So well, yes, yeah. I think this is going to be a very difficult period for investors. Jim, while the Fed has a dual mandate, the significant moves we're seeing across Europe, whether it's the stock 600 now trading at a 20% 20 down from its all-time high, the UK pound at a 37-year low, bond yields spiking, as you pointed out, uh, could that pressure the Fed from uh, raising rates set by 75 basis points at the next meeting? Yeah, because it could break something. It could break something really bad. You know, so the Fed wants to slow the economy to basically bring down inflation. The problem is and I'll use a euphemism, there'll be collateral damage. That means other things will break too. And you have to look to Europe. I mean, it's so bad in Europe right now that the Bank of England in August did something extraordinary. They forecasted a recession. No modern central bank forecasts recessions, just like the Fed on Wednesday. They always give you some low growth number and they say that we'll skip skirt by with a soft landing. But they came right out and said 
that they're going to start a recession in the fourth quarter, which, by the way, starts next week. So they know <laughs> that their economy is in a bad place. That's why they're massively cutting taxes and trying to stimulate, which is also bothering the bond market. All of that is a cocktail that could wind up causing a break somewhat, something to break somewhere along the line that could change, alter the course of economic growth in the U.S., if not globally, and maybe get the Fed to change. But that's not happening yet. Hello there, on behalf of SDBullion.com, this is James Anderson with a quick SDBullion market update. Before we go further, please smash the like button so other sound money stackers can also see this content. And be sure to subscribe to our SDBullion channel so you can get our latest market coverages and also a chance at winning incredible bullion giveaways like this one. Get ready for SD Bullion's Monster Box Sweepstakes that includes 500 Silver Eagles. You could be the next lucky recipient of a phone call like this. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. Well, I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a Monster Box of Silver Eagles. So click the link below for your chance to win. Click the link below to enter our new 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin type 2 giveaway contest. And good luck to all of you who take part. Both the silver and gold spot price markets sold off this week and strengthened in fiat US dollar terms. The silver spot price closes just under 19 an ounce and the spot gold price moved near just below 16.15 an ounce. The gold silver ratio climbed slightly to 87. Looking at the spot gold price technicals on this chart, we can see a recent fall through nearly two years of support. This morning, nearly 200 bullion and precious metals interested followers on my Twitter handle they took part in a poll that I ran regarding the spot gold price sell-off from the morning. The sentiment out there remains mostly bearish, expecting further gold price falls in the weeks to come. And chances are high since you likely buy bullion yourself, you are a contrarian by nature. So this week's headline in the Wall Street Journal claiming that gold has lost its status as haven, that's the kind of stuff you want to see for an eventual sharp rebound. With rapid central bank rate risings of late, many expect an inevitable breakage of something in the financial markets to come our way. We'll see how gold responds when real fear returns and central bank policies shifts are required. And turning to the silver spot price chart here, technically it's been a bit stronger than gold of late. But silver really needs to blow past 22 an ounce on spot to get momentum traders long again in large fashion. For now, silver is on sale and physical silver bullion continues to get taken from large exchange warehouses. Comex registered silver dipped this week to 43.5 million ounces. And the overall trend is deliverable silver piles in the U.S. East Coast in the Comex warehouses and in London. They're all shrinking. Indian silver bullion import data for last month came in this week with India taking over 30 million ounces in August 2022 after their record size July offtake of, of roughly 60 million ounces. As I've suggested last week, that's about 90 million ounces in only two months headed to India, and already over 200 million ounces through August of this year. The majority of that silver bullion is coming from the United Kingdom, and likely a lot of it is coming out of London silver warehouses and unsecured silver ETF holdings. Finally, in another sign rhyming with the 2010s when China was importing record-sized amounts of gold bullion kilobars from Switzerland, Last July 2022, just a couple of months ago, over 80 tons of gold bullion left Switzerland headed for Chinese gold bullion and jewelry stacks. That's the second highest amount of gold exported from Switzerland to China since 2012. In a further illustration that Chinese are aggressively buying this ongoing gold spot price dip, premiums paid on bullion in Shanghai are now nearly 50 an ounce over international spot prices as a revival in demand outstrips the country's current gold import supplies. So both increasing bullion demand levels in India and China, those are both typically a sign of attractive long-term price levels for bullion buying in the West. If you're fortunate enough right now to be enjoying relatively strong fiat US dollar buying power, take advantage before this powerful trend eventually turns the other way, perhaps in violent fiat debasement versus bullion fashion. As we move onward to our rapidly changing financial system structure, Prudent ownership of proven safe haven assets like gold bullion is going to shine and remind the world yet again that gold is safe haven money to hold for the long term. And as always, to you all out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. 
keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content. Thank you.